Hey there, and welcome back to NBA 2K18's My League Mode. My name is Pete, and today we complete what might very well be the final episode in the series, as it is now time for the NBA Finals Louisville Legionnaires against Minnesota Timberwolves. Over the last few episodes, the Legionnaires have absolutely been cruising through the playoffs. On their way to the finals, they have only lost one single game and are now facing the first seed from the Western Conference. However, I have a feeling that this is going to be a hard-fought series. The Timberwolves have an extraordinary roster. Unlike their real-life counterparts, there is no Jimmy Butler drama at the moment, and so we are looking at a pretty stacked starting lineup with Butler, Wiggins and Towns, accompanied by Jerry Millin at the point guard and Wendell Carter at the four. Needless to say that I think Butler, Wiggins and Towns will all have solid mismatches against us, while our main focus will of course be at the power forward, where I hope Anthony Davis can dominate once again. Minnesota's bench unit, meanwhile, is also pretty decent. There is not a single player here with a rating below 77, so their second unit can definitely do some damage as well. Still, comparing benches, I would see us with a slight advantage, not only because we have higher rated players on the bench, but also because Minnesota only has one more big man coming off the bench, so they are running with a pretty risky three-man rotation down low, and how they will be able to manage playing time will definitely be interesting to see. So the game plan for this series is pretty straightforward. I'm banking on Richardson and Hood to do their job on defense against Butler and Wiggins, but most of all we will have to rely on our interior defense when it comes to defending Carl Anthony Towns. And with that, let us now jump into the gameplay part of the episode that might decide it all. Timberwolves against Legion S, Game 1 in Louisville, is starting right now. And as expected, the first quarter of this game was a hard-fought back and forth. Anthony Davis started off with an otherworldly performance, scoring 18 points and grabbing 7 rebounds in the first. He also managed to give two quick fouls to Wendell Carter, who had to sit down earlier and force the other two big men in the rotation to play heavy minutes. However, we also had our fair share of foul trouble, Bamba sat down early with two and Bryce Johnson had three fouls in the first, and so the Timberwolves were able to score quite a few of their points inside. At the end of the first quarter then, the game was tied at 23, and in the second quarter not much had changed. Anthony Davis remained our best player with 6 points, 4 rebounds and 3 blocks in the second, so at halftime he had already surpassed his regular season averages. All in all though, the quarter remained fairly defensive-minded. Both teams were forcing a lot of turnovers, it was a physical affair that led to a lot of fouls, still the Legionnaires showed a slightly better shooting performance, and that allowed them to go into the halftime break with a 6-point lead. In the third quarter then, Minnesota had a big run and the Legionnaires had a poor start, and behind 18 points from Carl Anthony Towns this led to a quick swing and a lead for the Timberwolves. This time, however, it was not AD but Bryce Johnson who single-handedly kept the Legionnaires in the game. He scored 14 points this quarter and there was absolutely no stopping him. Despite all that though, Minnesota closed out the quarter strong, and heading into the fourth and final quarter they still remain on top. And so the Legionnaires would also be trailing for the majority of that final quarter. Wiggins scored 10 points for Minnesota and Jeremy Lin added 7, but midway through the quarter the Timberwolves all of a sudden stopped hitting their shots. And so behind a strong 11 points from Josh Richardson, the Legionnaires came back, and so we now jump into the final two minutes of this game with the Legionnaires only down by 3. However, poor execution on the pick and roll here leads to another turnover, and so the Timberwolves now with the chance to go for a 2 basket lead. Our perimeter defense does not allow an open shot though, and so eventually the ball finds Wiggins in the post. Hood sacks off for a second, but Wiggins still decides to go for the fadeaway, and so his shot gets blocked, Wiggins recovers it though, but also misses the second. The Legionnaires are now running with Bamba and Richardson, and with Butler staying below the basket, Richardson takes off and converts the layup, cutting the lead down to one. One and a half minutes left to play now and Minnesota is definitely feeling the pressure. The Legionnaires have not yet lost a single playoff game at home, and this one was also still very much up for grabs. Once again then, Minnesota goes with Wiggins in the post, this time though he drives instead of going for the shot, and even though he doesn't convert, it's enough to draw the foul, and so Wiggins is now at the line looking to extend the lead back to three points. If you're looking closely by the way, Carl Anthony Towns is nowhere to be seen on the court at the moment, and that would also not change after Wiggins makes the first, even though Towns still had one foul left to give. I have no idea why the Timberwolves decided to leave him out here, but at least Wiggins does what he's supposed to, converting both free throws and getting back on defense. On offense now, we are of course looking for an opportunity from deep, but nothing presents itself and so we also go down low with Davis, who immediately gets double teamed and that opens up a perfect shot. Richardson corner 3, one of the best shots he could have asked for in this situation, and the shot is good and the game is tied. The Timberwolves decide not to go with the timeout yet, instead they once again calmly set up their offense, but our defense was rotating fast and not giving them any opportunities. With the shot clock winding down then, Lin beats Exum on the dribble, but Mo Bamba rotates over to help and swats the ball into the second row. 
Only 5 seconds left on the shot clock and what a defensive play by the Legion S and Minnesota now with the smart move taking a time out to talk things over. Out of the timeout then the ball goes to Wiggins, then to Lin and then back to Wiggins, who heaves up a prayer from deep and makes the shot. Hand in his face at the buzzer and Wiggins still sinks the three. A phenomenal shot, some would call it shot clock cheese, but the end result remains the same, the Legionnaires are once again back down by three. So with only 40 seconds left we are back at square one, and now the pressure was firmly back on the Legionnaires. On offense then Davis in the post once again sees the double team, he kicks it back out to Bamba who takes the three, and especially being wide open that is a fairly reliable shot for Bamba. This time however it's off, recovered by the Timberwolves, and with that we have no other option but to foul. And I will spare you these unfortunate final 30 seconds. Even though Lin only makes one of his free throws, we immediately heave up another bad shot on the other side, and that more or less closed the lid on this one. We went back and forth at the free throw line two more times, but in the end, Wiggins' big three-pointer and a few poor decisions down the stretch sealed the game, as the Minnesota Timberwolves hand us our first home loss of the playoffs. Looking at the stats though, we have not much to complain about. Anthony Davis strong as usual in his first finals appearance, almost a 30-20 game, perfect from the free throw line and not a single foul committed, and Mr. Reliable Bryce Johnson once again more than earned his nickname tonight. He scored 17 points in 17 minutes and only missed two shots from the field. Richardson had 15 and yes, all of those came in the fourth quarter. Unfortunately though, it was not enough to turn this game around. For the Timberwolves, the man of the match was undoubtedly Carl Anthony Towns. He played a whooping 38 minutes tonight, didn't shoot the ball as well as Davis, but he still finished with a tremendous stat line, including 7 offensive rebounds, and of course, much more importantly, also with the win. So, we are down one game, not exactly the start I had hoped for, but if you have a look on the right of the screen, we also have some interesting news, because apparently in between games, Carl Anthony Towns sprained his ankle. It definitely did not happen in the game, and it will also not keep him out of the next one, but it might limit his minutes a bit, and maybe also his offensive production. Now looking to even out the series, the Legionnaires began with a pretty rocky start. They already committed 7 turnovers in the first quarter, and even though Minnesota shot poorly, they had more than enough opportunities to build the lead. For a long stretch, Anthony Davis was the only Legionnaire with any sort of noteworthy production, at least that was until the bench came in. Andre Flanders scored 5 and Mitch Dennis hit back-to-back 3s -back to put the Legionnaires up front, and so, despite a poor start, we head into the quarter break with a 5-point Legionnaire lead. In the second quarter then, Minnesota had the upper hand for the most part. 8 points came from Jiang, 6 from Lin, definitely not the Timberwolves' first scoring options, but they were able to close the deficit. For us, Davis scored 8 points, just like in the first quarter. That was good enough to keep the Legionnaires in the game, but also not much more than that. And so at halftime, we are all tied up at 49 points. Minnesota, by the way, up until this point, only with a single turnover. Third quarter now, and finally the Legionnaires were able to turn things around. This was a big quarter for the bench, Andre Flanders scored 8 points and hit a few absolutely ridiculous shots. Bryce Johnson added 6, Dennis 5, and as a whole the team shot 63% this quarter. Cutting down the turnovers also helped, and while Minnesota still took good care of the ball, their shooting could not keep up. And so the Legionnaires with a 14-point lead after 3, and in the final quarter things got even worse for the Timberwolves. Not only did Minnesota start to become careless with numerous turnovers, but Mitch Dennis also hit a few absolute bombs from three. He scored 14 points this quarter, shot 4-5 or five from deep, and single-handedly brought the Legionnaires up to a 20-point lead that would more or less last until the final buzzer. Definitely a great way to bounce back from the Game 1 loss, as tonight our reserves were able to close out the game, with the Legionnaires securing a decisive Game 2 victory. Five guys scored in double figures, three of those came from the bench. The group here headlined by sharpshooter Mitch Dennis, who shot a fantastic 7 of 10 from deep on his way to a team-high 25 points. AD once again with a big double-double, Flanders with 13 points on slightly below 50% from the field, Bamba with 12 and 10 but also with 5 assists and 2 blocks, and Bryce Johnson once again efficiently makes two-thirds of his shots on his way to 12 points and 6 rebounds. So here we are, all tied up and both teams will now travel over to Minnesota, where the series will continue with games 3 and 4. And we jump into game 3 immediately, Carl Anthony Towns fully healthy again, and his Timberwolves looking to make the most out of their home court advantage. However, the better start in this game clearly went to the Legionnaires, who saw a red-hot Rodney Hood shoot his way up to 11 points in the first, while Minnesota shot only a horrible 23% from the field and came up with only 5 points in the first 8 minutes of the game. 
Towns himself went only 2 of 10 from the field, and so being down by 6 after 1 was honestly a gift. With the way the Timberwolves played, it should have been much more. And in the second quarter, things continued mostly lag in the first. This allowed our starters to get some valuable rest while the bench unit kept the lead. Andre Flanders scored a big 12 points this quarter, but Minnesota eventually came back. A few successful three-pointers brought them closer and closer. The Legionnaires, meanwhile, missed one or two shots too many, and so at halftime, all of a sudden, the lead had been reduced to only three points. Both teams then started strong into the second half. The Legionnaires got 11 points out of Josh Richardson, while Minnesota also dramatically improved their game compared to the first half, and so the quarter remained back and forth for the most part. Only thanks to a slightly higher shooting percentage, the Legionnaires were able to extend the lead to 6 points, but we were once again setting up for a tightly contested finish. And so it came, in the fourth quarter, Carl Anthony Towns scored 16 points, not allowing the Legionnaires to pull away, and so here we are with barely over 1 minute left to play, and the Legionnaires holding on to a 5 point lead. Wendell Carter's 3 pointer luckily misses though, and we go the other way with our big man running. A wide-open AD drives to the basket, but Carter makes up for his mistake earlier, rejects the shot and sends both teams back down the court. A bit more passing by the Timberwolves, but we make sure not to give up a three-pointer, and so eventually they have to settle for Towns in the post going up against AD. And even though Davis does not go up to contest the shot, it still goes wide, and now all of a sudden the entire Minnesota defense collapses on AD, who simply throws it up ahead to a wide-open Mobamba, who is able to convert on an easy layup, putting the Legionnaires up by 7 with about half a minute left to play. Out of the timeout then, it's Butler in the corner getting a pick from Towns, and AD sacks off a bit too much, leaving Towns open for 3. The shot is good and the shot clock now turned off, Minnesota however still needs at least 2 baskets to tie things up. It looked like they will not get that chance though. Dante Exum remains cool at the free throw line and makes them both, and that puts the Legionnaires up 6 as Minnesota burns their final timeout. Out of the inbounds play, Lin gets a good open mid-range jumper, but he still can't make it, and so as Bamba recovers the rebound here, the game was pretty much out of reach. The icing on the cake then was Bamba making both attempts, the Legionnaires up by 8 now and that would also be the final result. Just like the Legionnaires in Game 1, Minnesota suffers a tough loss at home and Louisville takes a 2-1 series lead. Once again, we have 5 double-digit scorers, headlined by Anthony Davis with 24 and 16, and followed by a very efficient Josh Richardson with 21. Hood had 17, most of those came in the first quarter, while Flanders was big in the second quarter, scoring 12 of his 16 points there. Mobamba then played a team-high 35 minutes tonight, and also came up big down the stretch. His 4 points in the final minute ultimately helped to decide this game. For the Timberwolves, we definitely have to mention Carl Anthony Towns. Despite the losing effort, he was once again a beast tonight. He only got 7 minutes of rest and was thoroughly tired by the end of this one. Still, what a night it was for him, scoring a game-high 34 points to go along with 10 rebounds. So, Game 4 is coming up and the Legionnaires have a 2-1 lead. Now the big question of course is, will the Timberwolves be able to bounce back and tie up the series again, or will they go down 3-1 and return to Louisville with their backs against the wall? Well, in the first quarter, it certainly looked like Minnesota was ready to make a statement. Their stars came to play and 25 of their 29 first quarter points were scored by either Butler, who had 10, or Towns, who had 15, and that was enough to build a small 3-point lead after one. The only reason the lead wasn't bigger at this point was another great start from Rodney Hood, who scored 12 points, and from Obamba, who already had 3 blocks in the first, but the Legionnaires also gave up way too many offensive rebounds. Throughout the second quarter then, Minnesota's lead remained unchanged. We saw some great back and forth with both teams shooting above 50%, and with a total of 16 guys from both teams getting their names up in the scoring column. Jumping into the second half, we had Anthony Davis picking up three quick fouls in the third, now already with five in this game, and so he had to sit down for the rest of the quarter. Carl Anthony Towns, meanwhile, put on a show, scoring 14 points and grabbing 6 rebounds, but the Legionnaires would not back down, and behind strong performances from Andre Flanders and Bryce Johnson, they closed the 3-point gap and even took a tiny lead. 
In the fourth then, Towns remained strong, but only for the first half of the quarter. Then his shots started to miss and ours started to fall. Two quick threes from Mitch Dennis put the Legionnaires up by five, but the game was not over yet. With less than two minutes left to play, the Timberwolves try to get Towns going in the post against AD, but Davis has none of it. He rejects the shot and then Hood initiates the offense for Louisville. We are trying to give the Wolves a taste of their own medicine with Davis in the post, but Towns makes up for his mistake earlier, steals the entry pass and we're going the other way. Butler's draft to the basket then is denied by Richardson, who picks up the blocking foul, but we're not in the penalty yet, so the two moves simply sub in Jeff Teague and continue with the inbounds play. They pass the ball around the perimeter for a while until they finally find Towns in the post again, and this time AD does not get a hand on the ball and Towns sinks the tough fadeaway jumper. The lead now down to three points with a bit over one minute left to play, and as you can see at the bottom of the screen, Towns already with 44 points. Our next possession then looks very similar to what Minnesota did earlier, a bit of passing back and forth around the three-point line, and then we drop it off down low to AD in the post. Wendell Carter gives a bit too much space and so AD decides to go with a fadeaway of his own, and just like Towns before him, the shot is good. The Legion has back up by five and realistically we have about three to four possessions left, and so it doesn't surprise that the Timberwolves are looking for Towns in the post again. However, despite scoring 44 points already, Towns kicks it back out to Carter at the three-point line, who immediately takes a shot with plenty of time still left on the clock, but the result is a miss and a few seconds later the intentional foul on AD. Interestingly enough though, the Timberwolves do not foul again as we inbound the ball to Rodney Hood here, and so it now looks like we have all the time in the world to play down the shot clock. Eventually, we go for the pick and roll with Axum and Bamba, and they deliver the icing on the cake in this one. A big reverse alley oop from Bamba puts the Legionnaires up by seven, and this game firmly out of reach. And Minnesota would also not score on the next possession, and so here we are 22 seconds later as the Legionnaires take a close game four, and now have a commanding 3-1 series lead. And just like in the two previous games, we have five double-digit scorers in this one. AD leads the pack with 22 points and 13 rebounds, followed by a red-hot Rodney Hood with 20 and by Andre Flanders with 16. Bryce Johnson then a big double-double off the bench with 14 points and 13 rebounds, and Richardson rounds off the list of double-digit scorers with 10 points and also with the highest plus and minus of the night. For the Wolves, meanwhile, we once again have to mention the performance of Carl Anthony Towns. He managed to play even more minutes than last time, and he put up a fantastic, albeit not overly efficient, stat line, shooting 44% from the field for the same number of points, 15 rebounds, 4 steals and 3 blocks. So, this might be it right here. The Legionnaires are up 3-1 and only need one more win for the championship. Conveniently enough, the series now also heads back to Louisville, so let's see if the Legionnaires can close the lid on this one in Game 5. And the team started off with purpose, a hot start from AD who was completely unstoppable in the first and scored 17 points. Bamba, meanwhile, was the defensive anchor with four blocks and two steals, while Minnesota only surprised with somewhat strange rotations. For half of the quarter, we saw Kent Basemore at the power forward, and of course, as a result of that, Bryce Johnson had a field day in the post. Unsurprisingly, the Legionnaires had already built an eight-point lead after one. So far, this was a pretty lopsided affair, and only Minnesota's three-point shooting was the reason the lead was still in single digits. Quarter number two then didn't start off too bad for Minnesota. Behind Carl Anthony Towns and Wendell Carter, they went on a small run and closed the gap, at least until Anthony Davis returned in full force, scored 12 points and quickly helped the Legionnaires build a double-digit lead. The Timberwolves had absolutely no answer for him tonight, and so at halftime, AD already with almost 30 points and Louisville firmly in control. In the third quarter, then a shock for the Legionnaires. With barely over one minute played, AD has to leave the game with an injury. He suffered a twisted right knee and it was soon confirmed that he would not be able to return tonight. This right here without a doubt the best chance for Minnesota to mount a comeback, but long story short, it simply didn't happen. The rest of the Legionnaires picked up the slag and most of the points this quarter came from the bench unit, and while Towns and Wiggins did their best to keep the lead from growing further, they ultimately failed. Down by 18, with only one quarter left to go, the Minnesota Timberwolves' hopes of winning a championship were dwindling fast. 
and so I'm not going to keep you waiting any longer. The fourth quarter was ticking away minute after minute, but the Legionnaires would not give up the lead. Instead, even without AD, they extended it to 25 points. And so the Timberwolves soon gave up and pulled their starters. And so here we are, dribbling out the remaining seconds that separate us from a championship. And there it is, after only four years in this league and a dominating performance in this year's playoffs, the Louisville Legionnaires are your 2021 NBA champions. And what a ride it was from a team that started off as an expansion team with not a single starting caliber player on the roster. The Legionnaires have developed into a champion led by a true superstar in AD and surrounded by what might very well be one of the deepest rosters in the league. And I cannot tell you how happy I am to see over one year of work that I put into this series finally pay off, with the goal of the series completed and the Legionnaires as the NBA champs. One last look at the stats here, the celebration scene unfortunately glitched out for me, so I have no footage of a trophy being raised, maybe that had something to do with the fact that our best player AD got injured. Still, despite the injury and despite only playing 18 minutes, he was once again the man of the match tonight. He put up 29 points and 9 rebounds and was in large parts responsible for a dominant first half. After he went down, then Bryce Johnson quickly picked up where AD had left off. His big double-double was more than enough to keep the Legionnaires in the lead for the second half as well. And needless to say, I was very happy that Johnson is still on the roster. Richardson then with 15 and Hood with 12, but the secret hero of this game, that might have actually been Mohamed Bamba. Looking at the stats here, you will quickly see that yes, Mo Bamba put up a 5x5. A feat that was last accomplished in the real NBA in a double overtime game by Draymond Green in 2015 and before that by Nikola Batum in 2012. And those are actually the only two players to accomplish a 5x5 in the last 10 years. And now, at least in this fictional 2K universe, one more man can be added to the list. And with that, we have now reached the end of the series, with the Louisville Legionnaires winning an NBA championship. That was the goal from the very beginning and I am happy to say that we have finally completed it. Unsurprisingly, Anthony Davis wins the Finals MVP award with almost 26 points and 15 rebounds per game, and his injury would luckily turn out not to be too severe, only keeping him out of action for one to two weeks. So here we are, ready to wrap this series up. I will admit we caught a bit of a lucky break this year. Things might have gone very different had we met the Cavaliers again, but they made their exit in the first round, and so our path to the championship was a relatively easy one. Now, before we close things out here, there is one more thing still left to come, and that is a look at the subscriber draft class. Quite a while back, I asked you guys to submit players for this year's draft class, and the feedback was absolutely overwhelming, and I put quite a bit of work into that, and so it would be a shame if I didn't get to show it to you. However, that is going to be what I would consider a bonus episode for the series. After all, we have reached our goal in today's episode, and can now officially close the books on NBA 2K18's My League mode. At this point, allow me to also say thank you for all of your tremendous support over the last year. I had not expected this series to go as long as it did, but you were always there with feedback, with statistical breakdowns, with analysis, with trade ideas, and all of that really helped to shape this series. And I am so, so thankful for all of your input over the last 61 episodes. So at this point, it is my pleasure to call another series completed. Like I said, there will be another short bonus episode coming up in the next few days, but that focuses more on all of you who made it into the draft class, while the story of the Louisville Legionnaires officially ends right here. Of course, I hope you enjoyed the episode and the series as a whole. If you did, then of course, feel free to leave a thumbs up. If you have missed an episode or want to rewatch from the beginning, then you can find the playlist in the middle of the screen right now. And of course, if you want to support the channel further, then you can either subscribe if you haven't already, or you can also support the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.